Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. Would just make me overjoyed. We've been blessed to baptize about 120 people over the past six months, and we would like you to be the 121st and 22nd and 23rd. If you've not gone under the waters of baptism and you are a believer in Jesus Christ, it's one of the first steps of obedience that we should be walking in. We've given some forms on each of your chairs, so if you want to learn more about water baptism, there's one paper that talks about what it means, and there's another paper that is there to sign up. Just fill it out, turn it in at the Welcome Center before you leave, and, and we'll get you all the information you need about getting baptized that weekend. Easter weekend is obviously a big weekend for any church. We're encouraging everyone to sign up on their serve team to serve one and observe one, serve one, observe one. So go ahead and use your connection card as a tool if you're not already on a team and let us know that you'd like to serve and we'll hook you up and help you get connected. We've also put out a bunch of small Easter invite cards. Please start giving those out. There's stacks of them out there in the lobby as well. Easter is going to be a profound weekend where many people are going to surrender their hearts to Christ. I want you to be a participator in that. Go hand some of those cards out. Now, if you're new to Journey and we haven't met, my name's Eric. I thank you for joining us today. I'll be available after the service. I would love to meet you and shake your hand and get to know you. Would you say this with me? God is great. His word is true and it works in my life. Do you believe that today? Amen. Y'all did much better than the first service. You must have got like an extra hour of sleep or something like that. We're, we're glad that you're here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence and worship. We thank you that we could come and tarry with you and pray and seek your face and enjoy the fellowship of believers this morning. As we get into this topic of community and the distinctives of Christian community and how that should be lived out in our lives, we ask you, O oh God, to move in our hearts and minds to convict where there needs to be convicting, to release where there needs to be releasing, and to just encourage all of us to grow deeper into our relationship with you in Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen. So we're in this series kind of entitled, Who Do You Think You Are? We're speaking a lot to this topic of identity. We're examining the life of a disciple of Jesus Christ and seeing what makes us distinct. What are the things that we need to live out in our lives as believers? We've really honed in on four main topics, four overriding topics. We've been examining them in light of what we should do, and then we've been examining them in light of some of the distortions of those particular particular topics. So the first one we studied was image. We were created and formed in the image of God. The second one we talked about was worship. We were created to be worshipers 24-7, 365, not just Sunday mornings, especially not Sunday mornings when there's an extra hour or lack of an hour of sleep. We're all here and God's moving in and amongst us, but it's not just about the weekends. We talked about worship being every day. Today we find ourselves on the topic of community. What does it mean to live in community as a believer? And next Next week, we'll be kind of wrapping up the series, preparing for Palm Sunday and preparing for Easter with the topic of mission, living a life on mission. So there are four things there. Say them with me. Image, Image. Worship, worship, community, community. Mission. mission, a little bit faster. Image, Image. Worship. worship, community, 
mission, image, worship, community, mission, image, worship, community. You can't go that fast? Come on. Image, worship. So those are the four things I want you to have them deep inside of your heart and in your DNA. We need to understand them thoroughly as part of our growing up, as part of our going deeper as believers in Jesus Christ. So today we're going to open up with a set of scripture found in Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bibles with you, feel free to turn there now. If you don't, we will be projecting them on the screens. I encourage you to bring your Bible so you can make sure I'm not lying to you when I put these things on the screens. Because some people read them and they're like, did he write that just for me? No, the Bible actually says that. You can grab a copy of it in print. Or if you have a smartphone, go ahead and download the YouVersion Bible app. Go to YouVersion.com slash live. Download the Bible app and you can follow along with our notes with us during the course of the services. So feel free to do that as well. Let's go ahead and read. We'll dive right into this concept of Christian community. Acts 2.42. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers, and awe came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need, and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they all received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So this is a picture of what genuine Christian community could look like. We see a few topics there, worship, truth-seeking, belonging, prayer, communion, witness, sharing their resources with one another, loving one another. This is the picture that God gives us of what a healthy church should look like. So as we dive into this topic, one of the first things we need to talk about is worship as an expression of community. Last week, if you were here, we learned that worship is done in spirit and in truth. Worship in spirit and in truth. If you missed the message, I encourage you to go online and dig deeper into that topic. So we didn't really touch on the truth side of that, but you see it present here. There was a seeking of truth in the life of the believer as part of their worship. You look at verse 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and it says they gathered together daily in the temple. So the word being used here is devoted. It didn't say they casually went to the temple on weekends, right? It said they devoted themselves. They were going daily to the temple. It was the heartbeat of their life, the, the presence of other believers and learning what it meant to be in the word and of the word and live out this Christian ideal was something that was very active in their life. They made it the priority in their life. Where there was gatherings of believers, they were there. This is the essence of of Christian community that's being described. We've been plagued in modern day Christianity with a casual observer attitude that we talked about last week. See, we are called not to be casual observers. We are called to devote ourselves to seeking out the truth and living out this Christian experience. So you hear in the Bible, you read about people like the Bereans who actively went out seeking out the truth of God. They studied ardently the word. They tested what their leaders were saying in light of God's word to make sure it lined up with God's word. So they were actively seeking after the truth of God. They weren't being conformed by society in that day. They weren't allowing society to set the dictates of how they should live or how they shouldn't live. They were actively transforming society, transforming the community around them by their very presence. They were actively engaged in life outside of the walls of the church in addition to inside the walls of the church. A distortion would be us four and no more. We get saved and we're going to hang around all believers and that's all we're ever going to do. We're not going to hang out with anybody who's not in the church. That would be a distortion of community. They were called to live out there and make a difference. So in a practical sense, we've been trying to challenge ourselves really to go deeper as we started this year, have we not? If you've been here, we've talked about what it means to be a spiritual infant, a spiritual child, a spiritual young adult, and a spiritual parent. And we're striving amongst ourselves in partnership with one another to grow up to be parents in the faith. So using our language, that's what you see. The people were wanting to grow up to spiritual maturity, right? So we've done a few things as we started the year. We laid out a map 
a plan that you could engage in if you so choose. We've challenged you to fill out these gospel questionnaires. We've returned to many of you these gospel life plans that are written plans of things you might study and things you might learn and groups you might go to during the course of the year as a means of helping you grow up in your faith. And many of you are doing that already, and we're hearing wonderful stories about how God is working in your life as a result of you applying these principles of going deeper. Others of you are missing out. It's time to get into it. It's time to plug in. As your Pastor Don said, we're having another partnership course that's taking place on April 7th. I want to encourage you to engage and go become a partner where you will have a plan to move forward. The ultimate hope is that one day we have a ton of what we're calling gospel coaches raised up for those one-on-one -on -one mentoring opportunities. We're not there yet, but on Wednesday nights, we have a community that's gathering together to learn about being gospel coaches so they could learn in their own lives to deal with their stuff so that in turn, they could help other people grow up in their walks of faith. So we're putting these kinds of plans into place for those of you who want to grow. Man, you can plug right in, you can grow, you could lead, you could make a difference. But you can't sit back there and be a casual observer all the time, right? That's not what Christianity is about. There comes that day where you got to jump into the game, and that's what we see present there. So as we turn our attention back to this topic of community for a moment, we're all part of community, right? In a greater sense, we're part of the Jacksonville or Orange Park area community, right? We're part of the community that we live in, maybe the neighborhood that we're a part of. And then there's a lot of different subcultures that make up a portion of our identity. Some of them healthy, some of them maybe not so healthy, some of them healthy but not biblical, others of them strictly biblical. Let's examine some of the nuances of what I mean there. So say there was a show, if you're about my age, I'm 42. There was a show very popular as I was in my 20s. It was called Cheers. Does anybody remember the TV show Cheers? Okay, any of you oldies like me, what was the tagline? Come on. What's wrong with the rest of y'all? You didn't see that show? Come on, that was a famous show. What did it say? What was the song? Or not the song, but the tagline? You guys are weak, man. I mean, come on. It, it, it was the place where everybody knows your name. So these things that we've been talking about, worship, community, mission, we've said that God wired them in our very DNA. These are things that are inside of us, whether you're a believer or not.